North Carolina, the first ever Flat Earth International Conference has now come to an end. And I'm sad to say that I have left and I'm on my way home. I'm going to apologize now because it was so epic that I am losing my voice and a little bit hoarse. So I might sound a little different. Um, but that's a good way to gauge, you know, how much fun you have throughout the week or on a weekend is <clears throat> if you uh, lose your voice. I did a lot of laughing, a lot of crying, a lot of yelling and hooting and hollering and just being excited uh, and just consequently have lost my voice. <clears throat> but I wanted to make a video log and I, I might make this in a couple different parts and then, you know, edit it together. Um, I wanted to make a video log just kind of uh, going over the experience I had because I want to share that with a lot of you that didn't get to come. Um, some of you who maybe judgmental about this uh, event and just kind of give you a different perspective <clears throat> so I when I arrived I was so nervous and I don't you know I everyone says you know you have no, no reason to be nervous you're going to be amongst friends and I totally understand that but a lot of people don't understand that I have a, a documented issue with anxiety and I have a medical problem called vasovagal syn syncope which I was born with which used to um, cause me to black out when I was younger. And I still have the issue and still get the symptoms. It's just that the older I get, the more I can read the symptoms and I can kind of um, treat them as they come about. So basically what it is is that the 10th cranial nerve in your brain, mine doesn't regulate my heart rate and doesn't regulate my blood pressure. So at times when I get really worked up or nervous, or sometimes when I'm in a lot of pain or I'm sick and it raises your heart rate, uh, I can't always, you know, control that. But I wanted, I, I'm throwing this out there because just so that you all know the kind of um, adversity sometimes I go against when it comes to a stressful situation. And when I arrived at the conference, first of all, my drive was beautiful, driving through Virginia, the leaves were changing, it was just absolutely stunning. Um, I was quite calm most of the way. I got a little, you know, nervous right before I got there because it's just one of those things like, okay, I've been friends with so many of these people for two and a half years, some longer, and now we're about to meet face to face. It's so different than talking on Skype or just texting each other, you know, or being on Hangouts together because that's really not always the most relaxed um, because you're being recorded. And I was so looking forward to meeting everyone in real life, but I was also just nervous. Like, what are people going to think about me? Think of me? Um, am I going to live up to their expectations? And I know that's silly, but these are just those natural human things that go through your mind. And when I arrived, the first person that I saw was D. Marvel. And of course, I warned everyone that I'm a hugger. I didn't want to just shake hands. And he gave me the best, warmest hug when I arrived that I just felt like that I had come home. I felt so calm. He calmed my nerves. And then after that, it was just, everything just compounded as far as how many people I was meeting, how many people uh, that I was hugging. The energy in that room when people were arriving and greeting everyone was just indescribable. I can truly say that love and this affection and respecting each other and meeting each other really, it, it, that, that good positive energy overcame so much of the nervous energy. I, I wish I could translate that all for you in a different way. So, um, I, I arrived about 1.30, 1.45 and we were going to be leaving the hotel at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m., because the kickoff for the conference was to travel to the um, billboard in North Carolina, it's a flat earth billboard that David Weiss from Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole placed up, organized. Um, and so I was able, since I drove, I was able to take a few of us over there, um, transport us over to the billboard. And it was just 
as incredible of an experience as it was when I traveled to the Philadelphia billboard. It's, of course, huge, so much bigger, bigger than life whenever you get there. These billboards are just like, you can't miss them. <laughs> and it was, uh, all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're watching all of us content providers and Facebook friends and people who are um, following content providers, people are writing books, people are creating art, people are interviewing and being interviewees. All of a sudden, we're all just humanized, you know, following each other down the highway, pulling off the road, and clamoring up a 20-foot muddy bank, you know. I mean, I climbed a bank with Stephen Chess and Patricia Steer so that we could get into this field, and the field had like four-foot weeds in it. You know, we're all just, it, it humanized us all so much, and it was raining. Get to this billboard and just experience that together. Film it, take pictures, uh, live stream it, take pictures with each other, introduce each other, and uh, there was media there. Um, they showed up a little bit after we did. It was really, uh, it's, it was incredible to watch the media, some of the media show up with big giant umbrellas and all their equipment and doing interviews and David Weiss had his uh, drone out and he was um, flying up above all of us taking pictures, taking video, video of the billboard, which I still have yet to even watch. It's been so busy I have not been able to catch up on anything, almost anything anyone was posting. <clears throat> but believe me when I say that it was just so worth making this trip and this was just the beginning. The rest of the conference was just it went by like a blur. I wish I could have documented every single aspect and every single minute. But it was... It was more important to me to actually just have that experience and soak in the moment than to document all of it. Even though I know a lot of you at home were missing out and I feel really bad about that. But there were opportunities to watch the live streams. And there were opportunities to watch other people doing live streams and their videos made and pictures taken. But I want that to be a lesson for next year because we are going to have another Flat Earth International Conference in 2018 in November and it's going to be in Denver, Colorado. So don't miss out. Tickets are already on sale. So I encourage you that if you feel like you were majorly... Uh, missed out on this experience because it was so much more than just listening to the speakers uh, You know get your tickets now Reserve your rooms and look forward to a year from now spending some really amazing quality time with other like-minded people So Wednesday night a group of us went out to eat we walked across the road and Ate at a place called Rally Point. It's kind of like a sports bar and they moved a bunch of tables together for us We all got to eat it was just it was so Incredible, you know, bumping elbows with Rob Skiba and David Weiss and Patricia Steer and Stephen Chess, so many more. Daryl Marble, D Marble, <clears throat> Morgan Ellis, so many. Karen B. Endicott was there. It was just fantastic. Um, like I said, really humanizing experience. Watching each other eat, you know, seeing what e what each other order, and listening to the conversations and laughing and joking with each other. <laughs> It just and, and how, how we deal with the stress of it all, you know, and, and and comforting each other. It was just an incredible experience. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the conference itself. So the first day, Thursday, we had speakers um, from basically 9 a.m. to I think it was like 5 or 6. And then the second day, it was 9 a.m. till pretty much 9 p.m. 12 hours of just soaking in information, soaking in um, people's opinions and theories, and soaking in people's personalities, and just enjoying the moment together. But just shout out to all the speakers. Everyone that was up on that stage really brought their A-game. It was so incredible to watch you guys actually there speaking. I like I almost got like a crick in my neck because I was so infatuated with actually watching the speaker instead of watching the screens that I had my head and my neck and everything like back turned to be able to see because sitting up front and <clears throat> but it was so worth it. I wouldn't have had it any other way. 
it, I can't even describe how much of a surreal experience it was to like sit there and watch like Globusters live. You know, we all, you know, Sunday, today, that's something I look forward to listening to for three hours and it's always so worth it. And it was just so incredible to see Bob and Jaren up there in the flesh speaking and interacting with each other. Um, and Iru was there, Iru Landucci was their um, guest speaker and he did phenomenal as well. In fact, he did a, a presentation the day before and wasn't able to finish it, so he was able to incorporate part of that into the Live Globusters event. You know, I, I heard people say that this was just, why would they pay money to go to a conference to listen to people that they can listen to all the time on YouTube for free? But let me just tell you, there was so much um, shared that people have missed, that people clap for because it seemed like brand new information, um, things that were just profoundly said, things that we learned like as a think tank right there on the in the spur of the moment on that moment at the conference um i can't reiterate enough that we needed this and that it, it doesn't matter if you think you've heard it all it was amazing to listen to all these people speak and whether i've heard it in the past or not i learned something from all of this every speaker and not not to mention all the media that was there, all the interviews that were being done. The media was being um, subjected to so much flat earth information and the live streaming was being subjected to so much live and good information and that media is going to take it back. Now whether they uh, stay neutral on the subject, whether they put it in a positive or negative light, we don't have any control over that, but we did our very best to represent in a very good positive way and an informative way. There were exciting um, uh, new revelations. They had uh, surprises and they had things that they kind of rolled out that are brand new. Things like FE Core, which I have a little tiny video on, um, which is going to be uh, a core group of engineers that are going to be working on very professionally organizing and carrying out flat earth experiments going to be proving the earth is flat and stationary and actually have the funding to do it and have the high-tech equipment to do it and if that isn't exciting the steps that we're making and the positive forward motion we're making then you're just you're you're not paying attention so I, I just I I can't fathom how people can say that this you know wasn't going to go anywhere and that they're just speaking to the choir and that we're um, you know, that, that this wasn't needed and it, it shouldn't have been paid for. Uh, you know, you missed out. So there was a lot of incredible information shared that I guarantee a lot of you have never heard before. Like I said, it was a giant think tank. <clears throat> and just separate from that, even just, I had so many incredible, like life-changing conversations with people it didn't matter whether they were a YouTube um, channel content provider or if they were someone, a friend on Facebook, or if they were just someone that follows the channels and listens quietly. We had so many good conversations, like think tank conversations um, together. It was just amazing. And coming up with new theories or mel uh, melting theories together, um, kind of filling up holes and gaps in other people's theories and ideas. We, we, we needed this. I agree with Robbie Davidson's um, sentiments that he has said uh, he needed this and that we needed this as a community. He is so totally right. So the actual conference part, the, the seminars, the speeches, the uh, question and answer panels, which I was so honored to be a part of. I was a, um, on a question and answer panel with Patricia Steer as the host. And um, along with uh, Mr. Thrive and Survive, David Weiss from Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, Bob Nodell from Globusters, and of course, Dee Marble. And I can tell you right now that I, I was, th that was the thing I was the most nervous about was getting on stage and getting in front of everyone. And once I got up there, it was like I could have gone on another two hours. It would have been so much fun to have taken even more questions. Um, a shout out to everyone that asked the question for that question and answer panel because it was, the questions were fantastic. 
That was another uh, concern I had that we were going to get kind of silly questions, but the questions were all just phenomenal. I think everyone answered them in a, a wonderful way, a respectful way, and I was so, so honored to be asked to be a part of it. And, and as a second note, I was so honored to be part of the like feminine energy as a part of this. I just, I was, I'm just blown away that I was able to um, represent and that I was even asked to, to be a part of this just phenomenal event. So shout out to Robbie Davidson. Thank you so much for including me in this. It has just been life changing. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the vendors that they had set up. I, 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 I don't know how to describe how just amazing it was to see the hard work that people put into um, cre uh, being authors of books and creating uh, beautiful artwork, absolutely stunning artwork. Um, let's see, I'm going to try to remember everyone that was set up. We had um, a table was set up for Sacred Word Publishing uh, from Zen Garcia and Kathy Dunson. We were also on uh, the Truth Frequency radio show called Secrets Revealed, which I have had the privilege to be on, I think, about three times. Absolutely love both of them. Could not say that enough. And Laurel Austin was there helping them, and so was Malav and Shanti. And I got to meet both of them. Just an awesome experience. Hugs all the way around. And Laurel Austin was taking just absolutely perfect pictures of everyone, documenting this like I couldn't. And I, and I, I appreciated that immensely. I mean, she does such great photography. She made us all look like rock stars. <laughs> and she really captured the moment um, and the love whenever we were... In a quarter mile, use the right lane to take the U.S. 460 Sorry, East ramp to U.S. 29 North, Charlottesville. Sorry about that, I'm traveling, so there you got some... Uh, you might get some of that in the background. Some of my directions. <coughs> about that guys I uh, I have my GPS on my phone you know talking to me and I didn't realize I was coming up on the next exit uh, anyway gonna leave it in there um, and by the way GPS stands for ground based positioning system so I was talking about the vendors uh, sacred word publishing they just had a, an awesome display beautiful t-shirts. I, I purchased a, a gorgeous t-shirt. Um, all kinds of books. Bookmarks they were giving out. Just all kinds of stuff. Gorgeous setup. A lot of work that team uh, did. You know, packing all that stuff in there, getting it there, setting it up, and, um, and providing that amazing information for those of us at the conference. Uh, there was a gentleman there named, I, I think his name was Chris Watkins. Uh, he is a, like a tribal tattoo artist, and he does this same sort of like tribal tattoo themed flat earth artwork. And he had posters, st all kinds of different stickers, business cards, um, and he was giving them away for free. He was just asking for donations. Just really, really incredible work. We had uh, Chris Pontius was there who makes the Flat Earth models. If you've never seen those in real life, I, I took some video and I think there's some video in one of my other um, quick like video logs of the conference clips. If you've never seen his product in real life, it's just like so, so uh, impressive. And he also makes Organite and I bought an, an Organite pyramid from him. Uh, who else? There was Rob Skiba had a table set up selling t-shirts and selling some of his work. Very well done. And uh, Corey, who I'm going to say his last name is not his last name, but he goes by Corey Christopher on uh, Facebook. He is the Flat Earth Builder and he makes these just stunning um, tables. And he also has done clocks, but he had a lot of his tables there. We, they raffled one of his tables off at the, uh, the conference, um, and he had some, some people purchase them. He was also giving stuff away. He gifted me 
the most beautiful table, and I have pictures on Facebook, I, I believe I posted pictures already, and I posted a picture of him and I together, absolute sweet man, I hope you're listening to this, complete gentleman, and just, I followed his work for a very long time and shared it in some of my groups, really, really respect him, um, love his work, and I just, I couldn't believe that he gifted me that just stunning table, and I'm probably going to do like a little short video of that um, as well here in the future once I get home and get all settled down. But the vendors were just amazing. There were people walking around that were just giving stuff away that they had made, like um, hair ties with little, little flutter and symbols on them. Um, I only did that because I was showing you that they were that little. I don't know how else to do it. They're tiny. They're like fi like the size of a nickel. Little flatter and symbols on hair ties. It was just so, uh, so sweet. Stickers everywhere and bookmarks and uh, those people work very, very hard on that, on um, all of their content and their work and their books and their artwork, uh, the furniture, the models, and they deserved every penny. And so many of them um, cut prices and were just giving stuff away. So, you know, I don't want to hear one peep from people saying that it was just a, an event so we can sell product. I would have bought more t-shirts and I would have bought more stuff had there been more stuff. Mugs, there, there should have been way more stuff. Next time... Well, I hope we have even more vendors. I love that. I love traveling, and I always support the, the local people and, like, the, um, the gift shops. I love purchasing stuff from where I travel because, it's to me, that's a happy memory. Even the sweatshirt I have on it, I purchased it um, in northern Pennsylvania, a place we go to a lot because I love to support those people and their gift shops and the work that they do. I love it. So... The vendors were fantastic, and it was well worth I, I Everybody was just soaking it up. They were loving it. Um, and like I said, the uh, the conference in itself, the speakers, we, we got a um, we got to watch a live showing of Scientism Exposed 2, which is a documentary that Robbie Davidson was working on along with many other people, and this was um, premiered here at the conference. Very, very good. And we uh, people that were in the VIP sections got free copies of the DVD. Um, I can't wait to take it home and share it with others. Uh, Scientism Exposed, the first one, was also fantastic. If you've never seen the first one, I recommend doing so. And um, when you can, I would recommend purchasing the second documentary. It's like two hours long, completely worth it. Uh, like Robbie Davidson said, like, where can you go that you can have a two-day conference event where you also have a two-hour documentary premiere live and a live awards show? I mean, the, the, the week was just indescribable, like I've said. I can't use enough, you know, descriptive words. <laughs> I'm running out. It's just, I, I hope all of you can make it to the next one. Um, and to kind of finish off a little bit here, just the fellowship with everyone. After, after the uh, the day was done, as far as the conference and the speakers were concerned, when we would all break off into um, our, our friendships and go and get supper, uh, it was just epic. We dealt with a fellowship with other people. On Saturday, yesterday, um, I stayed an extra day, so the conference was really only Thursday and Friday, but I chose to stay till Sunday so I could have all day Saturday to just really enjoy instead of, you know, worrying about packing and leaving Saturday. And Saturday, we got up, um, a group of us, we went to a really quaint um, vegan restaurant for breakfast. It was called the, the Living Kitchen. It was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. A lot of you know that, and I don't claim to be, although I respect it and I understand it. I totally get it. And that's not to say that I'm not very close. Those that I'm close to, I've talked to a lot about this, that I'm I'm very close to changing, you know, my thoughts on a lot of those things. That being said, um, several that were with us, uh, including Patricia Steer, Stephen Chess, and um, John and Jenny Ford, were are vegan, and Mar Mark Queen vegan, um, and I believe another gentleman named Angel. I think he was vegan. So we all we just decided I wanted to try it. I'm completely, you no, know, I usually have three vegetable gardens going on, and I absolutely love. Uh, I, I wish I ate more clean like that. I know it's my decision. It's totally my choice. And I'm in control of that. But that being said, the Living Kitchen was just absolutely amazing food. I got um, to drink. I got what's called golden milk, which I believe it was either almond milk or coconut milk. 
and then different spices including turmeric which makes it a yellow color and that's why they call it golden and of course it's warmed up and it was just so fantastic it was like so soothing because it's been chilly and kind of damp out it was so soothing and spicy it just like really hit the spot and then for my breakfast I got something called the living bagel which was this like really unique whole wheat green bagel that they make there and it was topped with sliced tomato avocado it had a cashew sour cream like a cashew nut sour cream and then I think it was cilantro on top and it had some kind of like seasoning sprinkled on it and you could get it with jalapenos and they also served it with um, lime lime slices it was fantastic and even though it looked small I was it, it was very filling to me so that was such a good experience and um, good group of people that went with us to eat breakfast and Saturday then we went back and we rested a little while and then we got together and we went to um, the Natural Science Museum uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina and it was so funny because I, um, I drove and we're driving into town and trying to find a parking spot and we're like where is this you know museum and it was like you, you couldn't miss it because right smack dab in the middle of this museum was this like larger than life gigantic metal globe just out there <laughs> and then inside of it was hollow and there was like they did like it was like a like a little amphitheater thing but it was hilarious like right from the start it was like this big eyesore you know and we found a parking spot went inside um and had a blast going through that science museum because david weiss from deep inside the rabbit hole had all these little um flat earth podcast cards that said the earth is not spinning on the back of the really nice black cards really read them very easily and i mean we flat smacked the heck out of that place just left them everywhere funny places like under a microscope and said <laughs> earth is not spinning or like in front of anything that had anything to do with earth being a planet um like there would be places that said you know fun fact and then you'd find one of david weiss's cards underneath and we put them everywhere and it actually literally looked like the museum laid them out <clears throat> uh, <laughs> and i won't say some of the other places we put them because i don't want to keep anybody in trouble but it was just there, there are some of those cards and places that they will never be able to get them out. Not easily. It's so funny. Um, but anyway, we just had blast being there. They had a, like a question and answer um, time inside of that giant globe where it was like a inside was like a big screen and they had like balconies and they had people sitting. And this guy got up and stood up and he had, he did this question and answer thing. And mostly so sad because mostly it was like little kids sitting there and then answering these questions so we decided because of david weiss it was his idea we decided that we were gonna um flat smack them you know we're gonna go and like help answer some of these questions and some of the questions were things like how far away do you think the sun is so of course a couple of us raised our hands and said like 3,000 miles 300 miles between 3,000 and 5,000 and the guy was just like what <laughs> and it, it was quite funny um, the speaker was just a little bit like, you know, taken aback. And at one point in time, one of us, I think it was Mark Queen, yelled out because the question was, you know, which is your favorite planet or which is the third planet from the sun? And she yelled out, Earth is not a planet. <laughs> and I have a video on that too. It was just epic. <clears throat> but it was so sad. It, it really kind of hit home and almost made me like physically ill to sit there. And like Jaren from Jaronism was there too. A bunch of us and he was just like go, he was you could tell he was sick as well just the indoctrination and the rest of us felt the same way there's like straight indoctrination happening right there in this little like presentation at this museum for all these children because in a matter of like i don't know 20 minutes 30 minutes sitting standing there th that guy went over um the lies of the earth being a globe he went over the lies of the um the, what the planets are and how far, how far away the sun is things like that they talked about evolution and dinosaurs and then they talked about um some for some reason they added in there about bacteria in our body and how uh we have to brush your teeth three times a day but it was like enforcing the idea of like just jamming fluoride in these kids bodies it was just unreal like i couldn't believe all the terrible seemed like evil points that they brought up uh for indoctrination for those kids it was just it was insane 
but despite that, I feel like we made a little bit of a difference. We definitely made an impact, and um, and then we made our exit. <laughs> Went back to the hotel, relaxed for a little bit, and then a bunch of us... Um, made plans and we went out for supper and we got Mexican food and also had a fantastic time. Every time all of us went out to eat, uh, we made it a game that when we ordered our food, we had to incorporate something about the flat earth in our food. Like for instance, uh, for our breakfast, when we were at the um, vegan living kitchen, and I, I believe this is David Weiss' idea, is all these like great um, ideas. He said, when he went to order his food, he said something like, uh, what was it? Whatever his food was called, it had the word dirty in it, but he called it the, the dirty horizontal plane, like, bagel or something like that. It was just hilarious. And we all, like, incorporated flat earth into, uh, our, into our menu when we were ordering. It was just... And the, and the people, the servers, were either, like, taken aback or they didn't even catch it. It was, it was so funny. fellowship and the fun that we had I, I just you guys will never understand unless you do it and all of you out there doing the flat earth meetups and, and such you, you totally get it um, and, I, and I feel bad that every single one of you I wish all of you could have been there and experienced it but I just hope that you know me describing this you know motivates all of us to try to whether you go to a conference or not let's start continuing to meet each other get to know each other and talk to each other live like this and hug each other and sit down and eat beside each other, you know, and walk together. It, it's, I cannot explain to you enough how important this is. Um, but like, you know, we did such simple things. And like I mentioned before, just humanizing genuine things. Like last night, or last night there, a bunch of us, you know, we, after we um, went out to eat, got Mexican food, we uh, relaxed at the lobby bar. It's like the lobby slash bar. It's a big area where you can just bunch of chairs sit and relax and we sat in a circle and we played the most hilarious game <laughs> and had such so much fun like so much real genuine fun I've never laughed so hard in my life my like my jaws hurt and like my cheeks hurt from laughing I was crying like so much fun with all of you and all of you know who you are I just thank you for that such a good memory we had so much fun all together those evenings, just relaxing. There was a group of people at one point in time that broke out guitars and they were jamming and just singing together. And it was just, there was so much love there. And, and it was so wonderful watching people. You know, we didn't, there wasn't clicks. Everyone mingled with everyone else. I'm so happy with all of you that came up and found me and, and uh, introduced yourself to me. And I was able to give you a hug and, and connect with you, even for just a little bit. And, and see your face and hear your voice, you know, when maybe I've never had that opportunity because we just know each other on Facebook, something like that. I just, there's so many shout outs I want to do right now and, and um, I know I'm going to forget stuff that I want to talk about, but you know, I'm driving home and I've just, I have this on my mind and I have no one to talk to now, but to put into perspective, you know, because I had a vehicle, I got to drive um, a lot of us around for the last couple of days. It's such a surreal, beautiful moment to be able to sit in the car with the likes of Patricia Steer and talk like we're sisters and Stephen Chess and talk like we're brothers and, and Mark Sargent and David Weiss and Jaron and, and David's girlfriend Paige. Like it just, and, and Farley and his wife, Tanya. Just an incredible experience. You guys, this is why I do the video logs. I even said it. Like, I want someone so bad to be sitting beside me that I can share this with. And I got that the last couple of days. And every single one of you were so genuine and loving and respectful. I just, I will never forget it. Shout out right now to Robbie Davidson for um, organizing this. Absolutely life-changing event. I will never be the same from it. And I know a lot of us, it has changed us in a good positive way it has changed the movement in the community and, and you're going to see everyone's going to see that in the next couple of days shout out to rick hummer for being a, a, an incredible mc for the the event he did an amazing job with um just flowing from speaker to speaker and from event to event 
and putting in his um, thoughts here and there and very emotional um, dedicated man made me tear up a few times just with sharing his thoughts up there and uh, really just helped organize this event very well shout out to, to you shout out to the security a lot of people don't understand that this this was major enough and because of the backlash we have and, and unfortunately the hate and the death threats that we have that this was an event that definitely needed to be secure and Robbie had a big part in organizing that and the other gentlemen that were involved with the security we had we had uh, you know private meetings just making sure that all of us understood how much we were being protected and uh, I love you all for doing that thank you so much and you know who you are we had conversations <clears throat> sorry my voice is still very dry and um shout out to all the the fellow speakers you know all, all I I got to be involved in a question and answer panel and so I was only up there for a very small portion of time but just a huge shout out to all of those that did presentations I know that couldn't have been easy it was it was uh I can tell you it was it was wonderful and emotional to watch you up on stage when normally we just listen to you and to kind of, I could feel the anxiety a little bit and the nervousness and kind of getting into the groove of your speech or your presentation and then relax and take a sigh of relief when I realized that you were kind of um, getting over the nervousness and kind of just starting to, the, the words are starting to flow and you're feeling inspired. Um, it's like we all went through this together. So shout out to all my all the fellow speakers, shout out to every single person that came and met me, every single Facebooker, every single follower, every single content creator, every single artist, every single vendor. I wanted to do a shout out to my fiance, his name is Wayne, I love you and thank you so much for being supportive and I know that you know that this was really huge in my life and I needed to take this journey on my own. Thank you so much for being the type of person that supported me enough to let me do this. And you've come such a long way and I know that you enjoy listening to some of the uh, Flat Earth content and I'm so happy that you are open to um, at least listening to all this. And we celebrated six years together yesterday and we weren't, we weren't able to be together. But thank you so much for that sacrifice and allowing me to do this and understanding. Um, so big shout out to you. I love you. And I wanted to do a shout out to my mom, who is very adamantly not, uh, does not agree with the idea of the earth being flat and stationary. But the day that I was on the question and answer panel, she messaged me afterwards and said I did a a really good job and uh, so she had watched it somehow I don't know if she saw a friend of mine that was live streaming or if she paid for the live stream I don't know but it really meant a lot to me for you to tell me that you appreciated what I did and that I that, that I did it well um, shout out to all my all my friends on Facebook and especially to my all the friends that I know of and all the groups that I help moderate and big shout out to my admins and flat and happy and so many of you know who you are and those that have supported me as far as emotionally and motivated me encouraged me I can never thank you enough thank you to everyone that watched thank you to everyone that said nice thoughts all of you that were so respectful and nice are the ones that are balancing out the evil in this world I want you all to remember just like I mentioned during this conference that you don't need someone else to be going out and doing this for you and you don't really need someone else to be um, you know teaching you and speaking for you we are all pioneers we every one of us that have been listening and been involved in this conference or listened at home um, and have supported the movement thus far we are the ones that are um, years ahead and we need to be the ones that are the pioneers and we need to be the ones that um, can teach the next generations. I, I, I want to motivate you and I want you guys to understand the hope that is involved in this monumental event that just happened because 
um, it really is going to change the world when all of this the news media and all of this comes out I really think it's going to make such a huge positive impact I love you all I want you to enjoy your flat earth experience this has been my recap on the first ever flat earth international conference this is sunshine out